After that, we've got a short presentation by Michelle Reese, uh, followed by our main presentation. Let's start uh, without any more uh, major announcements. Uh, any questions, comments, um, things the group can help with from anyone? Got some information. I just got some information on vitamin B3. It's called, uh, what is this called? Uh, uh, niacin, niacin, niacinamide. Niacinamide. Yeah. How do people feel about that? Dynamite. <laughs> dynamite. Yeah. All right, um, one vote for dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> okay. if, you know, uh, working on an Alzheimer's project with Steve Fox. And one of the things that's big in the research is, is niacinamide. It's, it's like tremendous. So I'm going to give you my email, and, then, and I'll, I'll send you the whole, uh, the whole presentation. I have a question for you. Why niacinamide instead of niacin? Do you have a thought there? Yeah. yeah. Well, they don't, they don't interconvert. It's surprising. You'd think that one would switch, you know, they'd switch back and forth. But they don't, according to Steve, you know, he's the biochemist expert. They don't, they don't change back and forth very much to each other. So you, they, they're, they're really two different forms. And so the niacinamide, uh, you don't get the flesh. And uh, you, uh, you get this tremendous benefit. Uh, in, in fact, they gave it to mice who, who you know, were induced to have Alzheimer's. The mice, their, their cognitive function returned to normal. It was, it was stunning. I mean, and these scientists, you know, who usually don't use the further. I would say uh, for, for an adult, it would be like a gram Two five hundred milligram niacinamides uh, twice a day, so one gram twice a day. Yeah, and, and anybody's interested, I'll give you my email. I'll give you my card, and, uh, you can, and I'll send you the presentation. Because you know, Steve gave this really long presentation, and, and then he said, I said, Steve, it's got to be simple. He said, Okay, Phil, you translate for the public. <laughs> so I, I got it down to thirty minutes. <laughs> Thank you, Phil. Uh, we got two more comments back here. Uh, and one down here. Oh, quite a B3. It was B3, not D3. Yeah. Niacinamide. So there are several people here who appear to be experts in uh, these green drinks or energy soup or blended smoothies. And I think it would be great to have an evening of uh, demos of the different recipes and how they go about it. Uh, that's an excellent idea. Thanks. Um, I'm going to add to that. Um, niacin is a peripheral vascular dilator. That's why your face gets all red and itchy and it starts from the head. And then it goes down and your chest starts itching and it goes finally all the way down to your legs. So if you start out with even 50 milligrams or 100 milligrams, you go, I hate that feeling. But other people love it. So you can do it while you're taking a cool shower. Or um, basically, if you do it every day, you can go from 100 to 500 to 1,000 at a time. Now, Drs. Abram and Hopper, back in the 1950s, I think, took a group of schizophrenic and other mentally ill people in a mental hospital committed for life, and were able to, by giving them 1,000 <coughs> milligrams of niacin three times a day with some multivitamins, release 80% of the people to go home and lead normal, healthy lives. So there's a direct uh, connection between niacin and serotonin pathways. Then if you have blood circulation problems, take a couple good hits of uh, natural kinase, which is also opens up the tiny capillaries, so they can work in conjunction with each other. And of course, vitamin C. Of what? What did you just say? Uh, uh, natural kinase. Natural kinase. N-A-T-T-O. And so it sounds based on that that I should be giving lots of niacin to my mother-in-law? <laughs> <laughs> We're recording it. <laughs> what are you trying to get? <laughs> uh, any other comments about niacinamide versus niacin? Yeah. So there's actually another form of niacin, and I'm not sure I'll pronounce this correctly, but it's called inositol hexanicotinate. Is that close? And I think, Phil, correct me if I'm wrong, I think there are actually more studies on that form of B3 than the uh, niacinamide. Uh, well, anyway, so, so uh, B3, there are three forms, niacin, uh, niacinamide, and inositol hexanicotinate. And, uh, the, I, they call it IHN for short, and from what I've read, that's the most modern form, and, and it has all the vascular benefits of the flushing niacin without the flushing, and it has some other uh, benefits, uh, cognitive and so forth, just as you described, Phil. Anyway. 
I would recommend uh, a mix of all three. Uh, that seems to work well whenever there are multiple forms of something. I personally take a gram of niacin that kind of gets you all flesh. I finally learned to like the feeling. Uh, like, like bugs all over me, I'm just kidding. Uh, but uh, I also take, uh, I think about a gram of niacinamide and uh, a bunch of inositol that comes in one of the drink things that I do. Uh, so it seems like a good mix. Uh, two more questions. How about the time how about time-release niacin? Some people say that's not good for you to use a time-release product. Is that, is that the prescription one? No, no. not for the counter. Okay. So the question is uh, the, the no-flush time-release niacin, but it's actually real niacin that's time-released. Any thoughts about that? Oh, okay. Basically, um, time-released. Most time-released vitamins are made with beeswax and other waxes, and they just break down very slowly in the system. So. A lot of us who have, you know, less than optimal digestive systems, as like over 40 or so, they're just not going to absorb. They're just not going to break down. But there's really no problem with it other than that. Yeah, it's common with pharmaceuticals that are time release or sustained action. Those can be hard on your liver. Most of the supplements, they're just less effective if you don't break them down. The only time release thing that I take is time release vitamin C, which uses cellulose, which I can definitely break down. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, okay, next. I was going to say the same thing about the liver, so there's a, uh, in addition to regular time release, if you can't take the other, there's something called slow release, which is not as bad for the liver <coughs> as the uh, time release one, but it's better to take the uh, direct niacin or the niacin. Thanks, man. What is actually happening during that flush? What's the benefit of the flush to the body? The question is, what's the benefit of the flush to the body? Anyone want to take that answer? I'll just guess that if you're opening up your capillaries, the blood's able to flow more easily. Uh, the blood's able to flow more easily and carry out the toxins. And that's why I always recommend niacin and vitamin C together, mm -hmm. because that's a real detoxifier, and boy, that packs a wallop. Mm -hmm. Then a good CalMag supplement as well. Okay. If your blood is a little sticky, which tends to happen with age, um, or um, if you're if you're like me, you just naturally have sticky blood for mm -hmm. whatever reason. Uh, mold exposure, eye disease, something like that. Um, blood doesn't really get through the microcapillaries, and niacin could certainly help that happen, especially if you take um, natokinase or serapeptase, something that helps you to break up the fibrinogen in your blood. Now all of a sudden you're able to get blood, the nutrients and oxygen, to the very small parts of your body that might not have been going before. So um, I, I know I feel better when I do the niacin. One thing also, uh, it uh, releases histamine in your blood vessels, and uh, that has uh, quite a number of different effects on the brain and, and tissue. In fact, it uh, has been shown to be really the central core of the immune system and uh, as a uh, part to play in the stem cell uh, uh, growth and whatnot as well. And then the other, the other thing is that it activates fibrolytic mechanisms as well. Thank you. Great answer. Other uh, other topics of, of interest? If not, I can certainly, I've got one or two or ten. All right. Oh, here's one. I have to give the out of acid talk for the videos we have, and tonight will be video number 92 of the Smart Life Forum. And the information from 2001 with Clara Felix on vitamin D and essential fatty acids is as good as today, although we know a lot more things about vitamin D these days. And then when you're drinking water, I bring the water every month, and that's a 10 pH, it's extremely alkaline, so if you find a little upset tummy or something or intestines, don't worry about it. Okay, thanks. Um, I'd like to ask for a quick round of applause. That is an enormous amount of filming. Thank you. So, I've been experimenting with uh, various mycotoxin binding substances. If you heard my, uh, my presentation from a few months ago, mycotoxins are the molds, or the toxins that are created by molds that have systemic health effects at part per billion concentrations. One of the things that I just started doing this week is mixing multiple mycotoxin binders, and I just kind of drink it. I've been mixing bentonite, which is a pretty well-known uh, binder of toxins, been used for hundreds of years. It's a form of clay. You can buy it for eight bucks at Whole Foods with activated charcoal, another one that's been used for a very long time. 
uh, about oh, three tablespoons of each, that's powdered charcoal, uh, and three tablespoons of the wet bentonite, with uh, cholesterol, which is a prescription cholesterol binder that's been in use for 30 plus years, uh, that also has a, a very strong affinity for mycotoxins. And I found that if I mix that up, it actually doesn't taste that bad because the bentonite is sort of creamy and not gritty. But more importantly, if I drink that, say at midnight or something, when I wake up in the middle of the night, um, I wake up the next morning with more energy than I've had in a long time. My joints are less stiff and I just, I feel really, really good. And I've been able to sort of say if I don't have the combination of all three, it doesn't have the same effect. But when I put all three of them there, it appears to be synergistic, and I believe it's actually helping to mop up toxins that are generated in my GI tract when I'm asleep. So pretty neat little trick there. And all these things, with the exception of colostermine, are really cheap. And even colostermine is not an expensive drug. It's in little packets of powder, uh, but uh, not more than, I think, 50 cents a day, if I remember right. Uh, so that regimen costs almost nothing, and it seems to mop up an awful lot of, uh, of problems. So. Any thoughts or comments or questions? Constipation, what do you do with it? Uh, what do you do with constipation? It's probably just described yep. the constipation. 90% of everybody, like crazy, that tonight will do that. Yeah, and but and, and charcoal. And charcoal. Yep. Yep. Huh. Yep. All three are very constipated. And so all I'm saying is, why don't you add magnesium to your body? Oh, uh, I didn't mention, uh, I do a whole bunch of that uh, magnesium citrate ah. stuff, uh, but I do that every night anyway. Uh, I, also, I also drink about a liter of water before I lay down at night, so it, it's never been an issue, but I've seen it on the label that maybe that would happen. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that up. Um, and as a warning for those of us who don't like uh, clay clogging our pipes. <laughs> We've got a, another couple minutes. It looks like a question or a thought. In your evening regimen, you do um, growth hormone enhancements. Uh, the question is uh, whether I do growth hormone enhancements uh, in my evening regimen. Um, I don't. I I used to do some various things along those lines. The only growth hormone enhancement I do is uh, handstands. Um, you know, other other you know, things like this and. Basically, weight-bearing exercise um, to failure, which is a pretty strong growth hormone enhancer. But so far, I don't think I need growth hormones. I'm only 60. <laughs> uh, uh, two more questions. I've seen this uh, grapefruit pectin in the health food store. Great orbs. It says it's an absorber of something. I'm just not familiar with that. So there's a question about um, grapefruit fiber um, available in health food stores. Uh, the most common and effective form that I know of is called a modified citrus pectin. Um, it looks like I've, we've got someone pretty knowledgeable. Bern, no, do you want to? I mean, you're right, not uh, citrus pectin. So, so basically soluble fiber uh, for something like that is um, binds a ton of toxins in the gut and assists with motility and all sorts of other things. So one of the big reasons you take fiber is to help you move things through your stomach. That form, I've seen studies from Life Extension Foundation uh, and I think BRP saying that modified citrus pectin is particularly effective and it also can lower cholesterol. Um, any other uh, thoughts or comments on it? There are studies on the modified citrus pectin having to do with binding uh, tumorous or precancer clusters of cells. I can't recall just now the brand name. Um, well, actually, the brand name is Source Naturals, but I don't recall the study. I think it's Nutra Metagenic or something. But in any event, yes, fiber is always good, but this particular one has to do with, there are some clinical studies on it where it's bombed precancerous clusters. Uh, so people with potential prostate issues or, you know, xenoestrogen you know, concerns or potential cancers. Um, you know. Echo Nugenics is the company. Echo Nugenics, that's the one. Thank you very much. I think there's another. Um, yes, I've been using uh, coconut water from the young, fresh coconuts to dissolve cataracts in my eyes. And I know I was getting like floaters, and so I get the young coconuts and I drill holes in it and I put it through a sieve and then I rinse my eyes with it and I notice how clear my eyes have been getting and I've been doing it for 30 days. Oh, wow. That is awesome. Has anyone else heard of that or tried it? Where do you get the young one? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> 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 Is it legal? <laughs> 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 
Fife? Okay, so there's a book by Fife that describes that. Um, I eat about 30 fresh young coconuts a week, uh, personally. Um, I pay someone else to whack them for me because it takes too much time. <laughs> I deal in coconuts a little bit myself. I get them at Sagonas in Redwood City. I purchase Thai coconuts and baby coconuts. Drain the coconut milk. I'm kind of the expert in the green drinks. I follow Dr. Robert Young, PhD, and send people to his site, which is phmiracleliving.com. And I've uh, worked for years in kind of gourmet green smoothies and healthy alkaline cooking. All right, excellent. Uh, for cataracts, uh, there's acetyl L carnosine, yeah. uh, which is in the product Kanzi. Yeah. Uh, I guess that there are a couple other manufacturers of it. The FDA will mm -hmm. not allow people to say what it does, so it's an inactive ingredient. <laughs> uh, but it's what you buy the product for. It, it apparently uh, dissolves cataracts. So I can see there's a life extension eye drop with acetyl mm -hmm. l carnosine in it. I think there's a, there is, is it carnosine or carnitine? Yes. It's carnosine. Acetyl carnosine. Yeah, carnosine, not carnitine. Carnitine would probably burn. <laughs> C A R N O S I N E. I, I think acetyl L A C E T Y L dash L. The, the origin is uh, there's a Russian researcher that mm -hmm. has done it all, and you know, none of it's done here, so believe what you will. <laughs> you know, when the, even though the product uh, seller can't tell you what's going on, we can. You know, we, we, you know and really yeah. you can Google it, and it'll come right up. Just use the, you know, use the two keyword system, which I'm sure most of you know about. You just put the first word in, which is like whatever, carnosine or whatever it is. Then you put a plus, which you don't really need, but it kind of helps intuitively to tell you what you're doing. And then you put cataracts, and bang, you'll get the research like that, the first 10, ten reports. So I mean, this is why Smart Life Forum is almost tenable now. I mean, it is tenable. The reason is, one of the reasons is because all this stuff, you can go online and check it out right away. You don't have to be reliant on the sole authority that the doctor knows best. In fact, I've seen articles by mainstream physicians who um, are quite frustrated that their patients come in knowing more than the doctor does about the specific thing. It's a, it's a definite problem, and that's why you should make sure that you know about it, because if you only get six minutes with your caregiver, uh, you better do your research. Um, that's why I'm standing here today not weighing 300 pounds, and why I have enough energy to do this, because I want to learn. Hey, got someone this is what a baby coconut looks like. Oh, yeah. This is what a baby coconut looks like? Yeah. The way you eat them is like an apple? <laughs> you have to hit it with a machete. Um, yeah, we can sort of pass now, it around. That, that comes in two types. There's the kind with a straw, and the kind you need guys that are looking at the building to get into. Buy the one with a the straw. The, there's, a, there's a trick. You, you slice the bottom off, and then yes. you whack it with the back of a cleaver, and it'll, it'll pop or open. Hammer. Or a hammer. Yeah. If you buy the one with the straw, same price, yeah. you stab, stab the straw in. <laughs> so uh, we can pass this around, I suppose, as people can check it out. I can show you how to open these. I do these two or three a week. You take them at a 45 degree angle mm -hmm. with kind of like a machete, and you chop, 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 and tip it up just before all the milk comes out. Then you stick the blade in and pry the top up. Then you take a spoon, scoop out all the inside, the inside is kind of like yogurt, mm -hmm. it's soft, and you put it in your smoothie drinks, and then you save the uh, fluid, and you use the fluid for all different purposes, and drink the fluid and put it in your smoothies. Mm -hmm. And this is extremely alkalizing. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you see one that's pink or gray, toss it, that's full of mold. I say probably one in ten of the ones I open, I don't know if you see better numbers, um, have the wrong color, just don't mess with stuff that's not clear water inside. Um, uh, you can buy uh, baby coconuts at Whole Foods, a lot of uh, Safeway, Safeway, a lot of the Indian or Asian stores carry them for cheaper too if you want to buy a lot. I buy mine at the farmer's market. Well, it turns out coconut is, is probably number one for, for treating uh, Alzheimer's for reasons that are explained in that little presentation we have. But anyway, because Steve came up with but, but here's what I wanted to tell you. Uh, there's a book on the coconut and its uses medicinally, 
by Fife, which I just started reading, and it's just amazing. I'm so surprised it's as good as it is. F-I-F-E. I would really get it. Because <laughs> chapter two, for example, is a summary of fats. You know, the different kinds of fats. Why medium chain triglycerides, which come out of coconut, are much better than, than, than the regular triglycerides you get out of meat and so forth. So I really recommend that book. Which book is that? I think you're going to have Len Saputo here on June and ask him about his laser technology from uh, cataracts. Very interesting because I, um, I've been doing the same thing myself with friends of mine and myself and um, using laser, infrared laser. 830 nanometers to 880 nanometers and just look into it actually uh, reverses cataracts and Len will explain more about it. He's had a lot of success with it and um, he'll be here in June, right? Yes. All right, with, with that, I think uh, we're going to conclude, um, just for time, I'm sorry, uh, we're going to conclude and uh, open up with, uh, with our short report. Okay. Uh, the coconut comes back here when it's done. That's <laughs> getting <laughs> <laughs> sure. To introduce our next speaker, uh, 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 some years ago, <clears throat> I was talking with Mike Cora, the director of our morals committee for Smart Life Farm, <laughs> and he's always been quite an inspiration to me. Uh, <laughs> negatively and positively. <laughs> and so I said, Mike, you know, in our organization here, we have so many people, and you people are so influential, not only with your own families, with your friends, because you're always attempting to help, to work with everyone. I said, what can I do? And I was puzzled as to what I could do into our community down in Monterey. <clears throat> he said, one of the things that you might think about is doing some work with those fallen women in your community. <laughs> and I said, <laughs> and he said, well, it would take, he, he explained what he had done in the past. And <laughs> I said, this sounds interesting. It's something I've never really thought about. In the, uh, uh, and I said, uh, do you think that I can do it? He said, well, it takes a great deal of sensitivity and compassion. And I said, well, I don't know of anybody that has more of that than myself. <laughs> and, uh, he said, well, that's exactly what it will, will take. And so I said, well, gee, that sounds like a good idea. So I thought about it, went back to Monterey, and uh, st thought, well, maybe I can go to some of the church leaders. So I went to some of the church leaders and uh, discussed it very briefly with them. I, uh, <clears throat> I even went to a mosque, and so I know how compassionate they are with women. And uh, <laughs> they had a new imam in from Morocco, and uh, I said, uh, you're imminent, sir. I said, uh, would it be possible if some of these women who want to come in on a Saturday night, they want to sleep off a little drunk, can they sleep off in your pews? And then I realized they don't have pews, you know? I mean, I'm just wondering what kind of a religion is that? But I remember seeing Seinfeld one time, and you may remember that the, there are some Greek Orthodox people, and they have a very nice high hat, okay? And they have a string of garlic that they run around their neck. <clears throat> and, uh, and I, but I couldn't find a, a, a religious institution would it, that would accept what I wanted to do. So I put out the word on the street. Some of my friends that, who have a weakness for lust, all right, I suggested that they encounter any of these people that they should come to me because I was going to have an open house. So we moved into a brand new building there and <clears throat> I set it up and I had a dish of hard sucking candies which I was going to pass out to them. And uh, so I opened the door and the first lady that came through was a wonderful lady, and I said, uh, dear fallen woman, <coughs> would you like to come in? And she looked a little bit puzzled, and I offered her one of my hard sucking candies, and she took one, graciously, but then she took another one. I said, this is going to be more difficult than I thought it was going to be, because she took two of them. I said, you know, this being religious and a, and a sa saver is something that's very difficult. And she said, what do you do here? And I said, well, you know, 
uh, I'm trying to save people such as yourself. She said, well, I came in to see Dr. Brown. <laughs> well, Dr. Brown wasn't there, and so we started talking, and uh, I re very quickly realized that she wasn't one of those uh, vile individuals that needed help. <clears throat> And so we started talking, and we spent about a half an hour talking, and it was very, I found it was very, very interesting because he was an extremely intelligent young lady, a, fellow, a person, as interestingly enough, that I had heard about uh, down in Monterey for several years, but I had never personally encountered her. And I have friends of mine that were working with her, and I won't say because I know we don't talk about products up here, but she distributed something called Juice Plus, but the, uh, and my son has actually used it. My son, who is a world champion athlete, who has multiple sclerosis and is now in, is in a wheelchair and walkers and everything else, still holds world records that are still haven't been broken 35 years later. But uh, Michelle went over, went over to him and did some very beneficial stuff. But I want to give you just a little bit of bio about Michelle Reese. Uh, Michelle Reese <clears throat> dates back to the day in 1984 when her dad passed away at the age of 55. That told her that something had to change because people should not die at that age. So she started really going, reading, studying, doing everything, just as everybody in this room does, all of us in this room do. She went on to get a certified as a fitness instructor through uh, the AFAA, a personal trainer through the ISSA, International Sports Science Association. She holds a Bachelor of Science degree in Natural Healing and Holistic Nutrition, has completed studies in traditional Chinese medicine and Chinese medical Chai Gong. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. Therapy. Chai Gong. She got, oh yeah, thanks a lot for spoiling my day. She will, com she will complete, <laughs> complete a three-year graduate psychology course this May. She is a health consultant, nutritional educator, and personal trainer to children, families, athletes, a lot of athletes, believe me, um, a business and medical professional. She enjoys educating, empowering people to choose the road to wellness, get measurable results, and discover the gifts of living in a vibrant life. Now I know, in, in all seriousness, a lot of my friends who personally worked with Michelle, and she's, a, in my estimation, a miracle worker in her field. So with that, I'd like to bring Michelle Reese up, and I think you'll find she has a very interesting presentation. First of all, none of that is true because he has no friends. <laughs> very challenging for me because I did start acquiring a lot of this knowledge and everything I've gleaned is from 84 when I lost my dad. And uh, so to take 25 years of what I've gleaned and try to put it into 15 minutes as a short speaker, um, when Don said you're a short speaker, I thought, perfect, I'm 5'2", so <laughs> I didn't realize the time. So 15 minutes is a challenge and I'm just going to really whiz through a few things on enzymes, sugars, trans fats, and just do a mini PowerPoint with probably about 16 slides of people that I know personally, um, some personally, some not, as far as what health can look like at any age, and it's never too late to make changes. So first, I'd like to, um, can everyone hear me okay? Yeah. First, I'd just like to quickly talk about enzymes. Everyone in here, I think, knows about enzymes. Um, cooking food over 118 destroys the enzymes. And much like a battery that has lost its power, the physical structure remains, but the electrical energy, which once animated it, is no longer present. So we inherit um, certain an enzyme reserve at birth, and basically a lot of it becomes deficient through the standard American diet, and as we age, um, you know, the enzymes get depleted. So there are two ways to preserve them, and that's basically through eating raw foods, a lot of fruits and vegetables, as well as taking enzyme supplements. And the standard American diet really lacks a lot of uh, enzymes, which are naturally occurring in produce, and, and not enough people are eating the fruits and vegetables in the live produce. So what I had done for a demo, 
is to um, take two capsules, and these are fruits and vegetables in capsules, and um, the same thing would happen is if I had taken blueberries and put them into this oatmeal, it would just take longer. But basically what I did is to put two capsules in uh, two bowls of instant oatmeal, and I opened two capsules of vegetable powders, and I just stirred them around. And this one, you'll see, and it was about 20 minutes, it turns to almost soup. It's a liquid. So this would break down, and you'd get more nutrient assimilation from the food, and it would move through the digestive tract a little easier than this oatmeal that basically is like glue. So just to demonstrate a little bit about enzymes and why enzymes are so vital, they are... Uh, they run our system, and uh, we're so depleted in them. So, um, <coughs> eat as many raw fruits and vegetables as you can, absolutely, to increase the enzyme stores. The next thing is with sugars. And I like to do a lot of demo things with uh, children and families. I think when people have the visuals, they're more impactful and they tend to remember things. So I got um, some sugar, some packages, and by the way, I have a great handout, and it's over there, and I put a lot of information about what I'm talking about, as well as um, sugars, artificial sweeteners. The whole gist of this is what's in food. We should be eating a lot more whole food nutrition. I think of um, health and ambition is from eating whole food nutrition, and I think that's what we don't eat enough of. So I took some of these uh, products from the market. Uh, this is from Safeway, just a, an average... Uh, yogurt and four teaspoons, uh, four grams of sugar equals one teaspoon. So if you look at a serving, uh, you look at the label, look at the amount of sugar. It has 12 grams, that's three teaspoons of sugar. And remember to look at servings. It could be three or four servings in something. So you would have to multiply uh, the servings and then divide by four. So in this case, we have a yogurt with 42 grams, 10 and a half teaspoons, or Kit Kat bar, six and a half teaspoons. And people have said, well, does that mean this is healthier because it has less sugar? No, they're both junk. So you'd be better off to have um, you know, something more raw, add your own fruits and seeds and veg um, fruits and uh, nuts and seeds to something instead of buying this food, which is basically junk. Next, um, you can see something like a breakfast. A lot of moms send a kid off with a few Pop-Tarts and um, a yogurt, thinking that's a healthy breakfast. Think of one or two teaspoons in a cup of coffee, and it makes sense. But when you're looking at 10 teaspoons in just this alone, you can see, start seeing the results of type 2 diabetes in children. And a lot of it is this way too much sugar. This is the average. This came out of Washington State University. Three quarters of a pound of refined, refined sugar. The average American child invests, uh, ingests every day, which equates to a five-pound bag a week which we're familiar with that five pound bag used for baking, or 270 pounds a year. And some people say, well, that's crazy. My child doesn't eat that. But hidden in so many foods, including crackers that are salted, are loaded with sugar. It's almost uh, very challenging, almost difficult to find foods that don't have sugar, aren't sugar laden. So this is what the average American child is eating. And again, this is what's equating to the type 2 diabetes went and got um, the Gatorade as a personal trainer. This really gets me crazy. Um, talked to a coach of the Rams and said, "Is it? are these football teams really drinking this garbage? Uh, it's so touted that this balances the electrolytes. This has nothing to do with balancing your electrolytes. It's basically blue sugar water and dye. And um, a child who's doing an average soccer game after you know seventh grade, on a weekend doesn't need their electrolytes balanced. Someone like um, Michael Jordan, maybe after a game of basketball that he used to play, would need his electrolytes balanced. Or endurance athletes, triathletes doing marathons, not uh, little kids going out and playing ball in the street. So the coach of the Rams said that they use the containers because they're sponsored by Gatorade. So you see those big red containers in a football game but they water it down so it's three quarters water and one quarter Gatorade. So they're really not drinking Gatorade. He said, I wouldn't let my team members drink that junk. So here we are pimping this to children, these food manufacturers. So um, absolute junk. 
Another thing, Tiger Woods, I'm actually trying to really get in touch with him. I'm really upset with what he's pushing. He was drinking uh, three of these in a round of golf. And he's just come back from being out of golf for a year and had a lot of cartilage breakdown. Um, if you watch him, he has a cold almost every four months, which is a body cycle. So he'll run through a body cycle and you see him and he's sick again. And so it's a cyclical illness and a lot of it is the sugar he's ingesting constantly, three of these in a round of golf. So you look at this with 14 teaspoons and here's an example where you have to say 14 grams, it says 14 grams of sugar. So you think, well, gee, that's not four, eight, 12, three and a half teaspoons. But if you look at the servings, four servings, then you do the math and you come to 56 grams. Divide that by four and you get your 14 teaspoons of sugar in one of these. And kids are drinking these. Uh, when I do nutrition talks, I just see kids gulping these things down constantly. How many grams one of those packets? Four grams is one teaspoon. And um, then this was a, another visual. This is 20 teaspoons of sugar. 30 teaspoons can suppress the, a child's immune system by 40% within one hour. This is 20 teaspoons. This is actually almost the same amount uh, that's, in, uh, that's in this one. So it's just another visual to see the sugar and the amount that is in the products that these kids are ingesting. <coughs> Next, I went to um, I went to 7-Eleven to get this big bowl, <laughs> and I saw a child who was with his dad. His dad got this, thinking, being a good dad, this kid really wanted this, so he broke down and said, "Okay, you can have it." Mm -hmm. And uh, the kid was probably about eight years old. So I stalked him around the store just to see if he would finish it. And it was a blue Slurpee with a big plastic cup. And he drank the whole thing. And he had to be about eight. I'd say he was already about 25 to 30 pounds overweight and heading for disaster. And that's the thing that breaks my heart because I feel that we're, by rewarding children with sugar, we are really digging their grave with a fork, you know, or a, you know, a reward of sugar. We're, we're killing them. We're killing them slowly. So um, we're the adults. We're the parents. We control what they eat. And so a lot of people say, well, these kids, you know, are out of control. Well, it's not the children's problem. It's the adults' problem who are feeding the children a lot of times. And I look what parents are modeling to their children, and it's this type of stuff. So. Um, with this, um, I did the math on this one. I'll just have someone, do you mind holding that? <laughs> I just decided how much sugar is in this thing. And I came to um, 62 teaspoons of sugar. Oh, oh, wow. So you think about the sugar in a small can of Coke and a small candy bar. I'm 51. The candy bars we used to get as a kid were, you know, small. Now they're, everything is supersized. So the en enough sugar in a can of Coke and a small candy bar is enough to suppress the immune system for up to four hours. So I look at this amount of sugar and think, um, I'm going to take it because you don't want this. Um, I look at this child's immune system and again, it just breaks my heart seeing these kids, they're walking wounded and I have answers as to why they're so sick. And most adults don't really understand the connection between whole food is where we get our vitamins and minerals from plants. And that's what we need to eat more of, fruits and vegetables, raw, live food that gives you life force and raises your own vibration. So this is the dead food that's cooked. Again, enzymes, anything cooked over 118, it's dead food. Next, I wanted to do... 118 centigrade. Next, I wanted to um, do a little thing on trans fats. These were one of my favorite snacks as a kid. I ate these like I was going to the electric chair. I think I had about 6,500 boxes of these things. Um, they probably didn't have the trans fats then. And, you know, I'm preaching to the choir because so many intelligent people know this. But this is good information to pass on to kids to have them become little food police in knowing their labels. So anything hydrogenated, 
partially hydrogenated on a label is trans fat. And trans fats, um, nothing good about them at all. Our National Institutes of Health said, in quotes, no safe level of trans fats. One gram per day increases the risk of cardiovascular disease by 20%. One gram a day. One gram takes nearly one year to exit the body, according to the National Institutes of Health, and all organs reject trans fats, with the exception of arteries, your arteries. So they clog the arteries to the brain, it's a stroke, to the heart, it's a heart attack. So um, I look at a donut, it has six grams, a uh, Happy Meal has eight grams, so one gram a day is enough to uh, increase the cardiovascular risk by 20%. That, to me, is just terrifying with the way uh, trans fats exist in the food. They are coming out with um, a fat replacement. I'm just forgetting the name of it offhand. Um, but it's saying that they'll take the trans fats up and use this new fat. It's just as bad. So it's something McDonald's is still supposed to do, and they have not done. And um, a lot of the fast food companies haven't done it. So I took this um, hamburger, it's traveled around the country, I bought it in May 26th of 04, and it's a hamburger and fries. But for the sake of the demonstration, I wanted to get one a little newer to be able to show you. This was from April 13th, 07. And I left this with my nutrition supplies, nothing's refrigerated. Here's McDonald's hamburger, I mean uh, fries, and they've gotten stale from being out, but they've never molded. With this, I think it should have a skull and crossbones and not a happy face. And um, the bun broke in half from the travels, but basically the message is to show you that it never molded. So the hamburger shrinks up to this little delicious looking hockey puck, <laughs> and um, the, the uh, bun never molded. So insects and animals won't touch this. I've tried to give it to a dog when I do nutrition uh, talks. And um, invariably, I had one dog once who almost went for it and thought, he must be a junk food eater. <laughs> but um, that was it. And ants, I put it in the garden and the ants crawled, crawled over it like a bridge. So they wouldn't eat it. So inherently they know this is trash and we have to know that this is trash and this is what's killing us. So stay away from the trans fats. <laughs> you have more of the good fats, the avocados and nuts and seeds, the omega-3s. And last, because it's almost 15 minutes, I just want to show you a few pictures of health and um, things that have really inspired me. This is actually my, oh, it's too dark. Oh, well. well, oh, thanks. This is my nephew, Jason, who's 26. We worked together. He was about 30 pounds overweight, and we worked together. He really wanted to do kind of competition for national bodybuilding. And this is after um, about 14 months of changing his whole diet and eating a lot more whole food nutrition, which he hadn't done, eating a lot of... Um, uh, supplements that weightlifters use, and a lot of them are junk filled with artificial sweeteners, dyes, colors, uh, things that are just not helpful for the body when you're trying to get it to its maximum potential. So this is him at 26 after about 14 months of training. And just looking for the button here. Next one, this is a team um, out of Honolulu. It's for men over 40, a soccer team with all men over 40, which I think is really impressive. Another woman, don't know the age on this woman, but I'm guessing she's not 19. This is Cloris Leachman at 70. She had her body painted in fruits and vegetables. And uh, she's 80 now and just did the Dancing with the Stars, competed on Dancing with the Stars at 80. So at 70, I think her body looks pretty darn good. And she's new there. With, fruits and vegetables, and she said is what got her body in that shape. So again, it comes back to the live food and the enzymes. Another woman, I wish I could say this was my mom. Um, certainly, my, my mom just went through surgery and had 18 inches of her colon removed mm -hmm. because of blockage, and a lot of it is stress and bad diet. So I look at a woman like this with all this life force, and uh, 
you know, this is what it's about. These are the, the, working with the children now is our future. So we are our children now, the future adults. This is uh, Gene, a very good friend of mine. He's a personal trainer at the club that I work at as a personal trainer. And he has a great clientele. I look at his skin, the tautness of his skin and the shape he's in um, for 80 years old with the muscle tone he has. He's an amazing specimen. He um, squats almost 300 pounds. Another amazing, inspiring woman, you know, at that age to be have that agility and that coordination. What, what is the age, I guess? I don't know the age of this oh. one. No. Gene is eight, I don't know. If I didn't know it, I left it. This is just one of my favorites. This man has been an inspiration. That is his nickname. This is at 94. He'll be 95 this year. And, um, you know, just has done a lot of amazing things for the health and nutrition field to be an inspiration to kids. He's still going strong selling his juicers. But there he is with his um, raw, raw food juices. This man is out of Palo Alto, actually, uh, 90 years old, still lifting weights. Another specimen, picture of health. And I look at the weight of all these people playing bocce. I mean, just the fact of you look around now, and unless you travel around other countries, you see people who are the norm is thinner. But in this country, this isn't the norm to see this many people gathered together that are all at their, um, their proper weights, healthy weights. Another one I always loved. <laughs> I have a lot of people working out with weights now um, as a trainer who are getting great results starting later in life, getting muscle tone. You can start at any time. Great for bone density for women. Flexibility is another big thing. And uh, coordination to not fall. It's another, you know, just amazing to me. This, um, I was told this gentleman is 67. I don't know for sure. I can't confirm that. Uh, long distance runner. These are the Okinawans. Uh, you know, amazing. Uh, the Sardinians, the Okinawans, that, that have the um, lifespan. A lot of it is related to diet. And last, the last slide before um, I show it is... I wanted Dawn to stand up. Yeah. Yes, because Dawn has always inspired me and amazed me. Dawn, oh, yeah. a lot of people know Dawn, and I looked at Dawn with his posture. It was the first thing that impressed me at his age, because as people age, they tend to go over. And Dawn's posture was very erect. His life force is is out there. And he plays tennis with 30 and 40 year olds. Do I get yeah. money for doing this? <laughs> <laughs> I was always impressed. But you know, I worked with Dawn for a long time. You were stubborn. I said, Dawn, you know, you think you can always improve on what you have. And even though you have this posture and this health at, at your age now, at 83, you know, you still could improve. And he said, Really? And put me to the test. So I want to show you the before picture of Dawn, because this is what he looks like now, but this was Dawn a year ago. take a, a short break, a 10 minute break, a little less time than normal, um, socializing and bio break, and uh, be back here in exactly 10 minutes, which will be 20 after, so we can start our main presentation tonight.